Good morning, everyone. Well, since tomorrow is traditionally Palm Sunday, it made sense to let today's topic be the passage that is used for Palm Sunday, at least in some of the liturgical cycles. So we've entered into a final passage that will lead us ultimately to Easter, which is both symbolic and considered historical to be the day of greatest miracle, that is the day of new life beyond all death. But it leads even further to what I think is the greater climax seven weeks later in Pentecost, where that new life is not just in seed form, but takes full root and spreads through the world and the earth. And though this whole journey in this 40-day meditation series has had its own path to it, hasn't it? It's had a beginning. We've been going through something together and we're coming to the end. It's this end part that is particularly potent and dynamic. And that's why yesterday's topic, the chaos is in the air, I felt was an important one, not only because that's what's happening right now in our very time, but because in the symbolic way, in the spiritual essence way, drawing upon Christian inspiration, the chaos is in the air now because Jesus has been traveling about and doing great things and letting his actions and his words be the testimony of who and what he is more than claiming himself to be something in particular. He makes a lot of claims of his union with God. He makes very few claims that say he is something. Uh, So this passage on Palm Sunday is particularly eloquent for us because it's very audacious. It's one of the only times that Jesus allows himself to be praised and esteemed and celebrated for the greatness of what he's doing and who he is. And it has a very deep invitation for each one of us as well. So now realize that this is happening as the chaos is in the air. So there is a plot to kill him afoot. There are probably lots of gossip and backbiting stories moving through the various communities, Uh, people building up, uh, seeing Jesus as a threat or as something dangerous, along with Jesus being loved. So that's all going on at the same time, which is coming to the state of fury. I can liken it today with the way people are moving into states of fear and survival levels. And now this is moving into a state of fury. And right as this is coming is the very time that he allows this incredible celebration to happen. Now in the storyline, again, we're not being literal with the storyline. In the storyline, He's aware that he's meant to say yes to accepting this praise. And so he even pulls out the stops and has his own followers go and get a colt that he will ride on. And where is he riding? He's moving into Jerusalem, isn't he? The accolades that arise once they get that colt are remarkable, aren't they? His followers put their own cloaks on the colt so that he's not riding, hitting the colt's skin. And then in numerous different accounts, people spontaneously, we don't know how many people, but people spontaneously lay down their cloaks and lay down palm branches and strew flowers uh, in the path so that they are paving the way for him. And what kind of response does he get by those who are really concerned he's 
being over the top and considering himself to be God. He's told to silence everybody, that this is wrong, that this isn't humble to allow this kind of affirmation to happen. And what does he point out? He says, even if he did, the stones would cry out. This penetrates through to all our ideas of what it means to be enlightened and holy. How often we've been taught in our own spirituality the true spirituality is a humility that silences our voices. The true godliness is being the very palm branches on which other, others can walk. We're, we're taught a lot of ideas of what it means. And I just watched a movie recently where someone who had become a Christian zealot was hurting and persecuting non-Christians and had a moment of self-reflection. And he said, but I'm, I'm moving away from what Jesus taught. I'm, I'm getting to a place where I can't forgive. And his own leader, who was a Christian zealot, said, who do you think you are, God? Only God can forgive all people. As a way of rationalizing his killing people who weren't Christian. How deluded is that? And how deluded are we when we wish to silence the divinity arising within ourselves. So this morning's devotional entitled The Puja of Jesus is not so much us laying down palm branches that Jesus may, may pass upon them. It's us laying down the palm branches of delusion that limit us from sitting on the cult and accepting the celebration in an audacious way of the divinity moving within us. A couple years ago, I was going through a time of incredible loss, a lot of loss, almost like the book of Job loss. And I found refuge in taking long hikes with a lot of trees. And the trees would shape shift into various presences that were supporting me during this time of loss. And I remember, at one point on my playlist, I had on a song, He Ain't Heavy, He's My Brother. And I found always great refuge in that song. First, it's a little bit somber, isn't it? And sentimental. But it hits the deep chord that to be human is to be united with all humans. And I was pouring myself out in prayer in that. And as I was pouring myself out, in the essence of that song, the trees shape-shifted into such a presence that instead of my being a puja offering into creation, they were a puja offering to me. It's as though they were singing the song to me. It's not even as if. And you may consider me delusional, but I would love to invite you to explore the possibility that creation wishes to cry out, to cry out the godliness of your own being. So with that, I invite you to close your eyes. And if you will, let's let this be something of a time travel imagination. Time travel in a catching up of things right into this moment, not in a going back or a going forward. And imagine that you are invited to sit upon a cult, and to travel to a sacred destination. And that as you sit upon that cult, even the stones cry out your divinity. 
So this sitting upon the cult could be traveling among people, and that may be difficult. So we're, we're tricky and troublesome as people. Or it could be sitting upon a cult traveling through nature. It so easily celebrates the divinity of who and what you are. But whatever it is, sitting upon that cult is an acknowledgement in seed form or in fullness of your own divinity. And allow palm branches to be placed below the cult steps and cloaks. Allow flowers to be strewn in your direction. And let this be an encounter of the divinity within you, which is not puffed up, does not grasp things greater than itself, but rather rejoices in the truth and is divested of all false senses of truth. And if it is helpful, imagine that I'm there laying down palm branches or strewing flowers, celebrating your divinity. Allow, my friends, allow, allow. And if you have any resistance, allow that as well. Remember that celebrating and being celebrated in your divinity is not glory in a worldly sense of the way. We do so knowing that the chaos is in the air and that the world resists this kind of change. Let your heart and heart chakra open to the sweetness of tasting your divinity. Notice what arises within you. Is it freedom, solemnity, joy, 
fear. And now to bring our devotional to a close. Let yourself descend from the cult and offer your gratitude to this animal being an occasion for you to approach something that is true. Perhaps you're not stable in it, but you are approaching it. And before we open our eyes, make some inward commitment today of how you can stay faithful to this devotional what you can do to place yourself on the receiving end through the day. Remember, we can only give from what we have received. How can you receive the fullness of your divinity and the outward recognition of that so that you may be free to share that divinity with all? When you're ready, I invite you to open your eyes. Wonderful to be with you. Just a reminder, later today, I'll be sending the links for the Sacred Triduum celebration that will be Thursday night at 7 p.m. Mountain, Friday, 7 p.m. Mountain, Saturday, 7 p.m. Mountain, and Sunday, 7 a.m. Mountain. And if you wish to attend, you can attend one, you can attend part of one, you can attend all. There's no obligation. Uh, They're there to be free and you can share them in any way you want. If you have friends, share the Zoom links liberally. If you wanna put it on Facebook, share it there, however you wish to share. I'll also be including the link for the Mystic Monday that we have this Monday. And I ask for an RSVP simply because we're gathering so much towards the end of the week. Maybe you don't want to have that Monday wisdom share as well. But if you do, I'm here for it. Blessings, my friends. Have a great day. And I, with the stones, am shouting out gratitude for your divinity.